So we're in now what I refer to as a kind of intermediate stage of recovery for uh, heart from Harvey. And you know, when I last uh, did a video, I was sitting in the shelter and we were still welcoming people to a shelter, some of whom still had their wet clothing and bedding in a trash bag. And now we come to the part of the of recovery that is really much harder. Uh, the first part, uh, you know, we it's dramatic, it's intense, it's urgent. Everyone can see the need. We know what we're doing. We've got to make sure people are safe and have a roof over their head, something to eat, clothes to wear. And we wish it could go on like that with that kind of speed and that kind of urgency. But the fact of the matter is at this stage, we slow down. We slow down in order to do it well. And it's extremely frustrating. Um, if you're sitting in a home, and even if you've been able to get it gutted yourself, if you're sitting there and it's hot and you can't cook your own food and you still don't have appliances and you don't have clothing and you're overwhelmed and you've applied for a few things but you're not sure whether you're eligible for anything, this is not a good time for you and a lot of people are in that predicament. I worry, uh, frankly, as I go down the street, I worry about the people with debris in front of their homes. I worry more about the people uh, who, for whatever reason, there's no debris in front of their home. They haven't been able to put it there. And I'm thinking very much about those neighborhoods where we know there was extreme flooding and we know that we haven't been able to contact everyone in that neighborhood to find out how they're doing. And I say we, that's the collective service providers of the region who are just now standing up the case management resources we need uh, to actually work with individual families. So I just want to say a little bit about how that works. We start with service connectors, which is, uh, which is the title given to people that work for Baker Ripley that are, their job is really to talk directly with families, phone or, by, or in person, look at all of the options for them in terms of any kind of financial assistance. And that's going to start with a FEMA application, but it's also going to open the door to other kinds of assistance. We're going to look at their eligibility for SNAP, which is a food assistance program. We're going to look at the possibility that they may be um, encouraged to apply for an SBA loan. Those are not strictly given for businesses during times of disaster. Those loans go uh, can be had for other things as well. Uh, they might be eligible for utility assistance. We're going to look at that. So it's frustrating because it's slow. We have to actually learn a lot about a family situation, uh, their home, whether or not they owned it, how extensive the repairs will be. We have to come to understand all that to access everything they might be eligible for. And we're intensely interested in um, advocating for them in that respect because we have to use the public dollars available and we need to use them first and here's why. Even at a most conservative estimate, let's say there are 100,000 people in this region who are going to need a lot of assistance to uh, get back to anything resembling normal. At 100,000 people damaged homes, that puts us uh, uh, homes generally were spending uh, in previous events ten to fifteen thousand dollars to mitigate to restore so ten to fifteen thousand dollars times a hundred thousand homes already puts us over a billion dollars so we can't take our precious private dollars and start fixing homes today even if the manpower was available to do it even if we had all the estimates we needed even if all of the materials were here uh, we have to first make sure that the committed dollars, those that are really designed, public dollars designed to help people after disaster, get in there first and we do all we can with those. We try to preserve the private dollars for the unmet needs. These are the things that a family is just not going to be whole and, whole and functional without them, but they're not going to be covered by anything else. We're hanging on to those to the extent we can. Uh, that doesn't mean that they won't be used for extremely dire situations and some of those have come to light and we're working on them. But to the extent possible, we want everyone to access everything for which they're eligible uh, first 
and then we're going to look at unmet needs as, as this scenario wears on. Um, and that might involve, for example, a special appliance for a family uh, where there's a child with a health problem. That might involve a wheelchair ramp, which isn't going to be covered by other sources. So that's the, that's the way this um, service connection works. We call the unit that does that at Baker Ripley Stay Connected, and we call our folks that do it service connectors. Their job, day in and day out, is to help individuals navigate all these applications and make sure that the answers that are needed, uh, that we, we give the advice so that you can give the right answer to help this thing move forward. Uh, somebody, for example, uh, was asked, um, uh, you should, I was encouraged to apply for an SBA loan, a Small Business Administration loan, and they said no. And that shut down their application. And it's because they didn't realize that you didn't have to be a small business in some cases. So we, there's a reason we need individuals to do this work. And we've been funded to start that work by United Way and by the Greater uh, Houston Community Foundation. So these funds are right now, we ha are being used right now for these service connectors. But it's no good to talk to somebody about what you need if there's actually nothing on the other end of that. So even more importantly to this intermediate stage and our long-term recovery is the, nece the absolute necessity in this region for a long-term recovery committee. Uh, it can be called a committee, it can be called a coalition, it can be called a gaggle of well-meaning individuals, but ultimately what needs to happen is, I suggest on a weekly basis, we need service providers to come together with funders, to come together with corporate sector individuals, uh, uh, community representatives. We need a three-legged stool of public, private, and philanthropic actors who meet weekly. So the first job of this committee is to get our arms around the actual points of greatest need, the, the what I call the flashing red light neighborhoods and populations in our region that need our help. Make sure that we've left no neighborhood or group of people out as we scan where the impact has been greatest. Um, the second and most important uh, feature of this committee is to look at all of the people charged with acting to help and hold them accountable. And that's not in some browbeating sense of rushing people. Because quite frankly, the closer you are to these families, the more you hear about their circumstances, the harder you're going to work because you feel the pain and you feel the struggle of the situation that they're in. But it is to make sure that if there are bottlenecks, those get cleared. And you need some heavy hitters in this committee because those heavy hitters can often clear a path for what needs to be done when individual service providers, agencies like Baker Ripley or others cannot. And the third really important feature that, uh, of this kind of committee is uh, people are constantly offering resources. People are saying we have these supplies, you have companies offering teams to help, you have out, uh, outside of the arena nonprofits saying we can bring teams of volunteers. There needs to be a clearinghouse essentially for what's offered and then a, a fast way for that to become assigned and deployed. You do that really well in these committees because each week you're working on these three things. Do we fully have our hands around uh, all the cases that need to be worked and all the situations that need to be addressed? Do we know the numbers of them? And can we see that we're scaling up to get to those numbers? The second thing is, again, you're looking at who's doing what and are we all moving with all the speed we can muster and if someone's ahead, we look at how are they ahead and what can we learn from that. If someone's struggling, we look at why. And in that way, we have some accountability built in. And the third thing is really, really important. If something's offered, we want to use it. Um, this is a large scale event. Uh, the dollars, no matter how you calculate them, are enormous. And there's no one sector that can f fund all of this and no one family that recovers on its own. So coordination, cooperation, and an intense focus on getting it done uh, should be our goal.